Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast that doesn't live up to the hype, because this week we watched The Ark in Space. Written by Robert Holmes. Directed by Rodney Bennett. And aired in January and February of 75. We're finally here, this long-awaited serial that is supposedly one of the best classic Who stories ever. And I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was good, but my expectations ruined it for me. I'll I mean, isn't that. that with anything, though? Like, if you go into a movie expecting it to be really terrible, you'll actually think it's okay because it'll be better than being really yeah. terrible. Yeah, but I mean, here, this was just made out to be this amazing serial that's one of the best ever produced, and I didn't think it uh, was as good as other serials that I enjoyed. It's because we had such high expectations. Yep, and apparently I'm just looking at it now. This is pretty unrelated, but it takes place in 16,087. Hey, why not? <clears throat> is that further than they've gone before? I don't think it is, actually, because I think they've been to like the 31st century or something. Yeah, I don't think it's further than they've gone before, but it seems a little bit much. Hey. I mean, it's 2015 right now, so that's like, what, 14,000 years from now? Well, they're only supposed to sleep for 5,000 years, and they suddenly slept for 10,000. Yeah. You know, whatever. Well, I didn't really catch the exact numbers. I don't think they ever actually said, but I don't know. I don't think human hum, yeah, yeah, humans will still be around then, but... We, ha we have to make the, the human empire still. <laughs> um... Right, so before we begin, there's a really silly story, I guess, behind the writing of this story. Well, really convoluted. Yeah, convoluted and silly story. But anyway, so two people tried to write uh, a space station set story at the same time. One was named Christopher Langley, and he's not important because I don't think he ever writes for Doctor Who again. <laughs> and one was John Lucarotti, who you may recognize because he wrote The Massacre, <laughs> uh, and also Marco Polo and the Aztecs. Um, so this was going to be his first script since the William Hartnell era, and uh, he was writing from a houseboat do uh, docked off France, I think, or in the Mediterranean somewhere, and uh, he didn't really communicate with Robert Holmes a lot because <laughs> of postal disputes, and so by the time the script actually arrived, uh, there was no time to send it back to Luke Roddy for rewrites, so Robert Holmes was just like, I'll just rewrite it then. <laughs> um and he basically did super extensive rewrites and didn't really keep a lot of the original ideas that Lucarati wrote in, but they paid yeah. Lucarati anyway. Yeah, I think the only thing that's vaguely similar between the two scripts was just the space station and the invasive species. Well, the species. space station, the invasive species, the sleeping for 5,000 years, and the weakness to electricity. That's huh. about it. Yeah, it's barely anything, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, interesting tidbit there <laughs> so anyway it begins with the doctor and harry sullivan well it begins with harry messing around with the controls which causes them to land on nerva beacon yeah but we don't see that they just kind of all pile out of the tardis mm -hmm. the doctor goes did you really have to twist the heimic <laughs> regulator the helmet harry? regulator <laughs> yeah, and we we don't know it's nerva beacon yet and uh i didn't know until after watching the entire serial, that this starts an overarching plot line for yeah. season uh, 12. Whatever we're on right now, 12. Uh, hopefully, better than the overarching plot line in season 8. <laughs> well, um, well, the next serial obviously has to immediately follow after this one, given that's, that ending. Yeah, that's. that's remember when we said. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Planet of the Daleks and Frontier in Space? Yeah. Remember when we said those had to be in integrally related? Well, the second one had to at least follow from the first one, which is also true here. It'd be really difficult for them to just disregard that plot thread they introduced at the end. <clears throat> I mean, they could just pass it off in dialogue with them st starting in a new location. If they didn't want to reuse the set for whatever reason, I don't know why, but... But, okay. They could just reuse footage, but... The next serial was actually filmed first. They yeah. filmed the Sontaran experiment before Ark in Space. Yeah, I knew that somehow. I don't know. And they switched why the, or how. the switched the airing order because I guess it would would not make sense to air it in the other order. 
if yeah. the next serial follows on from this one. Yeah, that really wouldn't make sense. But anyway, Harry is messed with the controls and they land on a space station. Yeah, and he and, decides to mess with more controls. And yeah, I mean, he's kind of being a nitwit here. A little you bit. You mean a bumbling buffoon? <laughs> but I don't know. I felt the doctor was being too harsh on him. And remember last week when we said the doctor's personality wouldn't just completely 180? Well, here it kind of does. Here he kind of goes back to that season seven uh, I didn't feel like it was as, as, as extreme as season seven. In episode one, I definitely did. He tones it down in two, three, and four. I didn't feel that way at all. I also felt it was... Worth it because Harry Sullivan was being a bumbling buffoon and basically causing all of their issues for the first episode. Yeah, well, Harry's going to be an interesting companion. He basically doesn't really do anything so far. Uh, well, he did he more just... in the seal than Sarah Jane. Mainly yeah, because well, him true. pushing the button got Sarah Jane accidentally cryo frozen. <laughs> like, thanks, Harry. He, um. I don't know, he just doesn't seem to have much of a personality to me. He almost seems like Steven, but worse. Well, Steven was a space pilot. Harry yeah. Sullivan's a naval doctor. Yeah, That's his personality. He's kind of a cross between Steven and Ben, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but less funny than either of them, actually. Uh, but we'll see how he develops from here. Um, obviously, he was better than... Uh, in last serial, where he kind of did even less, but he wasn't really a companion at that point, so whatever. Anyway, uh, there's barely any oxygen in the room they're in, and the doctor, no, yeah, the doctor uh, isn't really having trouble breathing, but Harry and Sarah are. Yeah, because there's no ox oxygen, obviously. Yeah. I think they introduced that plot point about the doctor not needing as much oxygen, like, way back in Frontier in Space. Well, he has two hearts, so... I guess yeah. it kind of makes sense. Um, this is kind of foreshadowing for what happens later, I guess. Uh, yeah, I suppose. <clears throat> possibly. <laughs> well, uh, Sarah decides to sit down on what she thinks is like a seat or something, but it's actually a transmat system. Yeah, T-Mat comes back in this serial. <laughs> so she gets beamed somewhere else and ends up getting cryo-frozen. Uh, the Doctor and Harry don't realize this because they're busy dealing with the automated guard system. Which yeah, has this, zapped Harry's shoe. Yeah, this was kind of filler, honestly. Uh, the uh, automated guard system pretty much just uh, blasts anything <coughs> organic. Um, the doctor and Harry have to move around under a table. Yeah, they eventually uh, get it shut down, and uh, Harry's both of Harry's shoes have been zapped by the machine, so I guess we just assume that he goes without shoes for the rest of the serial, actually. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. There's probably a shot of his feet later, though, where you can see shoes on. Probably be a continuity error, since both of them got zapped at the beginning, unless he went into the TARDIS off-screen to get more shoes. The world will never know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's that's all of episode one, actually. They kind of... They find Sarah in the cryo-sleep room, and episode one ends. Well, they see the little, um creature first vaguely for like a split second the doctor's like what's that and it crawls into the vent oh and you mean like the guy in the green suit <laughs> just kind of wiggling around on the floor <laughs> no actually i don't think they see it they see the slime trail i think harry briefly sees, sees it and i think the doctor's like oh no probably just an air current or something no Trick right the, the doctor eye. just brushes it off for some reason just a little but then weird. he sees the slime trail and it's like oh wait never mind harry guess you were right <laughs> but yeah then they make their way into the the cryo sleep room and find Sarah and yeah that's pretty much it for one who's a little bit drawn out really well in episode two they find a dead insect but not not like a small insect like a giant insect <laughs> yes like in the planet closet. of the spiders level <laughs> uh yeah they open up the closet and it falls out and it's clearly just a plastic husk but um we won't mention that even though we already just did <laughs> um Right, it looks, in design, it's almost like a cross between a, I want to say a cricket because it was upright, um, but not really. Something like that. Sort of like a cricket fly, almost. Not a bug scientist. <laughs> I know those have a name, but I just don't know what it is right now. It's obviously bugologist. 
Um, right, but, uh, then someone, well, the doctor ex- is examining the other sleeping people and deduces that they've been asleep for thousands of years, and Harry says, well, isn't it about time for them to wake up? And he says, well, no, not really, I think they'll probably be asleep for a long time more. Um, but then someone may- wakes up immediately, right then and there. Convenient. Yeah, I, I guess the Doctor and Harry accidentally tripped some sort of automatic system. I don't know, but anyway. Really? I thought it was just a complete coincidence. <laughs> no, I, I didn't, it didn't feel that way to me. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, her name turns out to be Vira, and she is, I guess, the chief medical officer for the, for the space station. And uh, they kind of enlist her help to try to wake up Sarah, and she, and she says... The best line so far, she'll either live or die. Which can apply to anyone at any given moment ever. Pretty much. (laughs) Most generic line of dialogue in existence. (laughs) Um, Right, but Vyra is uh, pretty snarky, I guess, and uh, uncooperative. Uh, She calls the doctor and Harry regressives. Um, Yeah, because of their accent or something. Yeah. Apparently, the only people chosen to uh, be cryo-frozen and to uh, perpetuate humanity were, like, superior human beings, so... I guess Harry and the Doctor wouldn't qualify, although the Doctor wouldn't qualify anyway because he's not even human, but... (laughs) Yeah. Well, she wakes up the commander, who's named Lazar or whatever, but everyone just calls him Noah because ha-ha, Noah's are... Yeah. Ha-ha. Um... (sighs) I don't think it was as uh, apparent a reference to them because, you know, they said, oh, it's a story from mythology that was, like, lost to the ages or something. So it's, I guess it's less probably less stupid to them than it is to us to call him <laughs> Noah. Um, but, oh, we forgot to mention the Doctor and Harry kind of just straight up tell them, yeah, we're time travelers. Which is that they're travelers. travelers and they kind of accidentally landed on the beacon. Yeah, they kind of just believe it, though. They don't, they're not really... I don't think uh, they said the time travelers, though. Okay. Noah doesn't believe it first off, and then he also makes the leap, like, they're going to contaminate our gene pool. Like, what happened to the option that they're just going to leave well, as then, soon as their friend wakes up? Well, Harry also um, responds to that by saying, we're not going to contaminate anything, or um, something like that, and which brought to mind the, uh, the theory from oh. several weeks ago, <laughs> where they just... Uh, they show up and bring some sort of pathogen, wipe yeah. out the native species. Yes. <laughs> pulling a Christopher Columbus <laughs> or a Hernando Cortez or whatever. Yeah, that. But well, we'll never know for most of these things, so. We do for this one, because the Eighth Doctor visits the newly established colony later on. And because of things that are spoilers for, like, the next couple of serials, but... That I know about now that I've accidentally read them. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, well, right, Noah's <clears throat> woken up, and he's even more against the Doctor and Harry than Vira is. Yeah, he just wants to kill them, but Vira mentions that she doesn't think their termination is necessary. Right, Vira and Noah also, we didn't mention, are... Uh, I forget the term they used. They're not like... They're, they're, they're lovers, bonded. but... Yeah. I guess but that's... I don't think we find that out until episode three. Yeah, well, that's like it's heavily implied in episode one, two, and two, one, and one. Like right when Noah wakes up and Vira like caresses. Yeah, they only wake up in two though. There were two. That's what I meant. Uh. Yeah, well, they decide to start waking up more crew members, and Noah shoots the doctor because the doctor's trying to find out what's wrong with the solar cells, and the doctor just pulses out. I guess stun gun. Right, he, the doctor actually goes to the solar cells and sees yeah. the weird green glob thing inside it's of it. It's the green death. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's actually the seaweed. No, no, no. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually just the maggot from before. So, yeah, kind of the green death. <laughs> um, you mean the dude in the green bodysuit thing wiggling around inside the container now? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the doctor mentions, before Noah shoots him, he mentions that action has to be taken. But Noah's like, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want, and shoots the doctor. Yeah, he 
And then he goes into the solar cells next and he gets touched by the green thing. And then... Uh, and decides to cover it up! Because, literally and figuratively, because that's clearly the best idea. He shoves his hand in his pocket and doesn't talk about it for a while. I, I get why he doesn't tell the doctor and uh, Harry and Sarah, because she's passed out, because he doesn't trust them. But why doesn't he tell Vira? Like, wouldn't it be a good idea to let her know? She finds out eventually. <laughs> well, Noah really wasn't running on all cylinders, so to speak, in the serial. <laughs> kind yeah, of jumps I mean, to a lot of conclusions, almost like Sarah did in the Time Warrior, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, but I can <clears throat> understand why, um... Never mind, I'm not gonna get into it. <clears throat> I just don't think he wants to let anyone know that he's an incompetent commander. Why so he decides to just cover it up. Why can, I mean, I can understand why he's incompetent after he gets bitten or touched or whatever happens, but why was he such a incompetent fool before that? Why was he chosen for this operation? I mean, that's what I was wondering the whole serial. Like, who chose this guy for the mission? <laughs> By the way... Let alone make him the commander. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... Whatever. By the way, Dune has been killed. Uh, he was the, um... The bug that came out and was dead, I think. Well, we find out I that... Think. <laughs> I was, well, very no, I think, no. I was very confused on this plot point. No, the, the, the bug laid its eggs in Dune as as sort of a breeding, or not breed, but a, uh, God, what is the word? Um, incubation? Yes, incubation sack. <laughs> that imagery. Which is very grotesque, that, yeah, actually. That, that imagery. Um, Thanks, Philip Finchcliffe. <laughs> um, and that's why he died. And also, apparently, the larva... Um, absorb Dune's knowledge by uh, growing inside That's of him. That's the plot point you question. <laughs> yeah, well, it was kind of weird. I mean, it makes sense to me, you know, lay the eggs inside the body and the bo they They ate the body for nutrients, so they kind of absorbed his knowledge while eating his body for nutrients. <laughs> I know this okay. sounds kind of disgusting and right. terrible. Why not? <clears throat> yeah, that's how Dune died. And then, uh, after what's his fit Noah shoots the doctor, he goes back to talk with Harry and Vira and says, "I am Dune," which confuses you for a while. But then confused like, me for this whole series. <laughs> I think uh, he was just saying that because he had Dune's knowledge. Cause yeah, because the, the bug which had grown in Dune was now possessing him. Yeah. Well, he. I think. I mean, <laughs> do I really know? <laughs> he um. He runs off into I don't even know where, but the Doctor, Harry, Sarah, and Vira kind of meet up again, and yeah, Noah, wake up Sarah. And Noah gets on the PA and is like, we have taken over the spaceship, your resistance is useless, we will kill you all. Right, the bugs are called the Wern, by the way, W-I-R-R-N. Yeah, the we find Wern, out kind of like Wern. here. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think, I think the Doctor called them the Wern. <clears throat> Not sure on that, though. But well, yeah, they're taking over. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're taking over. Um, we see Noah's left hand now for the first time since the incident, and it's kind of turned into this green kind Abomination. of... Abomination. Yeah, looks like, uh, if you know that rock that floats pumice, looks kind of like green pumice. Not really, it just kind of looked like moss was growing all over his arm to hmm. me. Looked like, uh, looked like pumice to me. I guess just in terms of appearance solely, but it didn't look like pumice texture. Well, eventually into episode three, it uh, kind of takes over his entire left side of his body. And Noah and is basically a lost body. cause now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Vira decides to wake some more people up because that's yeah, kind of the best course of she action. She wakes up. Um, Libri. Libri, Lyset, and Rogan. Libri, Libri dies in episode two. Yeah, Libri, his only purpose is, <laughs> is to wake up and then immediately get killed by Noah. He doesn't do anything else. <laughs> yep. Um, in episode then, three, Lyset just dies because he just happens to be in the cryo sleep room when uh, one of the women show up and kills him. Right. And then Rogan kind of stays. Rogan would have made a better commander than Noah, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> uh, uh, Rogan helps them for the rest of this serial. 
the cliffhanger of part two, episode two, was uh, when Lysette is confronting Noah and Noah takes the gun from him and, and kills him. Episode three, we you get this... Libri. Uh, Libri, sorry. And then uh, we get this voice over the PA system from Earth Prime Minister. It's a woman. And then Harry mm-hmm. Sullivan's like, I guess that must please you, Sarah Jane. And she's like, what? <laughs> He's like, you know, having a person of the fairer sex leading the humans. And she's like, whatever, Harry. <laughs> um, right. And it's a pre-recorded message from thousands of years ago congratulating them on waking up. Yeah. Uh, little did they know that everything would go wrong. Um, uh, we forgot to mention they're actually waking up like a couple thousand years late because the wound kind of chewed through the electronic system that was supposed to automatically wake up uh, most of them. Right. When the doctor was first examining the dead wound husk, he notices that they've messed with the electronics, the electronic systems, and um, which and that caused the delay in the cryo sleep thingamajig, which caused them to wake up thousands of years after they should have. Yeah. So the word are intelligent, which is what the doctor deduces, and he's right. Yeah. Uh, but I guess their larva form isn't just their fully grown form. Anyway, the doctor removes the brain of the dead one and lugs it into the control room and connects his brain to it so he can <laughs> find out how it died. And uh, he's like, he, he gives uh, Vira a gun. He's like, don't be afraid to use this on me. And Sarah's like, no, I won't let you. But, uh, oh, well. He finds out that um, the bug died because of the electricity in the system because it chewed through a cable and then electrocuted itself to death. <laughs> so they realize that if they can electric electrify... Electrocute. Yeah. I was going to say, like, electrify the, uh, the control center. Oh. Yeah. I don't think that's the word, though. I'm totally they can blanking get a, on what the word should be, though. They can get, like, an open current Electrocute. It. Yeah, it must be electrocute. That's what I what said. What you said. <laughs> must be electrocute. No, wait, that doesn't... Electrocute is when you get shocked. Yeah, no, okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, I don't know the word either. Hmm. Unsurprisingly. Um, oh, well... <laughs> So yeah. I mean, they try to do that. <laughs> I mean, not much more to say takes on that. A pretty long time. <clears throat> um, meanwhile, Lysette dies. They're all kind of yeah, panicking uh, in the control room because because some larvae show up and they're attacking the the room where they're stationed. Yeah, the the doctor and I think Harry and Rogan go down to the the solar cell room to find Noah. Something like that. And uh, and with Vira. And they talk with Noah. And then uh, he's like, you must leave. Quick. Go. Right. He still, he still retains some of his humanity here. <clears throat> they, uh, <clears throat> the scene was longer in the original cut of the uh, episode. And uh, had Noah talking about the duality between enjoying transforming into the wound, but also hating it. And uh, Hinchcliffe... I mean, Hinchcliffe wants to make the show darker, obviously, clearly based on this episode, this serial, but um, he wanted to do it a bit slowly since it was kind of still a kid's show, so they, they cut that scene in post because they thought it would be too dark. Uh, I read also that they cut a line from Noah where he said, where he, like, exp- that it wasn't cut from the serial, so I don't really see the purpose in this, but apparently he was going to explicitly state that the worm are going to lay their eggs. They say this later, so I don't know why they cut it. Um now but apparently he t- he like tells Vira one on one okay yeah we're going to lay our eggs in the humans and they're yeah. going to hatch and stuff but they they do say that later so i don't know also in the, in the scene cut. that was cut he he pleads with Vira to kill him and end it all and uh, Vira can't obviously because she's pair bonded with him i guess the plan was for them to mate for the next generation of humans yeah okay i guess that's what that was makes sense <clears> to me um, but they cut that because they thought it would be too dark. So the scene kind of looks a bit janky because it cuts in the middle of Noah's speech to the doctor <laughs> and then leaving. Like, okay, let's go. <laughs> um, but they leave, and I think uh, part three, part three ends with Noah kind of advanced. Part he, three ends in the middle of that scene with Noah's about to attack the doctor, and then that scene happens. And they leave, and then Noah kind of takes over the space stations. Like, yeah, he's pretty much. 
sorry to interrupt, but he's pretty he's completely transformed now. Yeah. By the way. Um mm. the the he's, he cuts the power to the whole space station, so there's no oxygen. So they're kind of uh, all just withering Dying. away in the control room before Sarah Jane points out that uh Noah had mentioned a spaceship transport that he wanted the Doctor and Co. to leave on, and that that must have its own power source. Right, because Noah said, okay, you know, I'll spare your lives if you just leave right now. Yeah. And even though we have Warren stationed mm. outside the, uh, the station, <laughs> stationed <laughs> outside the station, uh, if you leave now, I'll just let you leave in peace. But if not, I'm going to kill you, so they say no. Yeah. Obviously, Vira doesn't want to leave the space station and all the crew members. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the worm. Well, we f- we find out also exactly what the worm are up to and why they're doing what they're doing at the beginning of four. Yeah, uh, which I don't know. I felt it was a little because the odd humans were doing the thing they always it. do and just invading the Andromeda galaxy and kicking all the worm out. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't sure. Did they know the Wern were an intelligent species, or were they just like, you know? I don't know. I guess but maybe they just thought they were just bugs. displace the native population. Yeah. You know. So the Wern want revenge. And Rightfully so, to be honest, <laughs> they have legitimate motives for this. Yeah, I guess. I mean, they can survive in space. Yeah, they don't need they oxygen. To, but they have to. Um, land on planets every so often to breed, I guess. And yeah. that's what they're doing here, because they want re- they want revenge on the humans, so... Uh, like I said, yeah. rightfully so. <laughs> and, I don't know, I felt it was a little odd to just dump all this information right at the beginning of 4. Maybe they could have... Sp- they did spread out the, you know, backstory of the Wern a little bit over this serial. I felt they could have done it a little more. Not that it really... Not that that's what uh, throws a wrench in this serial, but... You know, there it is. So anyway, uh, Sarah points out that they can use the oxygen from the shuttle or whatever it was that they yeah, were the going to do. Power. Um, but they can't run the cable out in the open because the worm will just, like, chew through it. Right, so 10th planet style, they decide to go through the ducts uh, <laughs> while Sarah does because apparently she's the only one who can fit. Well, until the end where she gets stuck and then the doctor's like, you're useless, Sarah. You were never able to do anything. You always said you could, but you can't. She's like, oh, you. And then she uses her rage to escape. And the doctor's like, good job, Sarah. I was just encouraging you. Um, so that was a thing. Yeah. I was okay with that scene, actually. At, at first, I was like, doctor, what are you doing? What are you? Uh, and then and then when I figured it out, I was like, oh, okay. It's pretty obvious what he was doing, like, right from yeah. the first Right from the beginning, but um, I didn't really care. Um, poor Sarah Jane. It's like, you conned me. And he's like, what? No. No, I didn't. I was just egging you on. <laughs> um, so they, they connect the cable and they, they hook up the power to the space station, but then Noah just shuts off the oxygen. Uh, so they're like, oh. Um, well then. The doctor tries to bluff his way through Noah by telling him that they're waking up more humans but noah doesn't believe him about that either he's right <laughs> unsurprisingly and then uh the doctor talks to noah and tells him that he could he still has some shred of humanity left to hang on to if he just leaves the humans alone i think he, something like that yeah but noah's like nope so you think <laughs> um meanwhile vira harry and rogan are in the shuttle uh running some some checks, I guess. Pre-flight checks. Something Just like that. Just in case. I guess. They're there for some reason, so... Right. Um, Set for the shuttle looked... It had interesting lighting. It's like blue. Dark blue. Yeah. Um, eventually, uh, the worm break into the shuttle hold. Uh, uh, Vira and Vogan and Harry are like, Well, what do we do now, Doctor? And the Doctor's like, Quick, escape and set it for automatic takeoff. Because um, apparently all the worm go into the shuttle. Yeah, uh, it's. I think it's convenient. His, I think Virus says later that Noah must have led them all into the. Yeah, it makes sense why they do so later, but. Yeah, so. Unless it was just all a huge coincidence. No, no. I don't no, know. I doubt that. <laughs> um, well, Noah's the leader of the hive, and uh, anyway. Yeah, we didn't mention that Noah's the leader. I think he actually only just reveals this right now, so. 
he's the leader of both the station and the world now. Well, actually, he hands leadership over to Vira. Yeah, but... pretty terrible leader of both, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Considering what happens in five seconds. <laughs> Um, so the shuttle takes off, uh, Rogan sacrifices himself to declamp the last clamp for the shuttle, because I guess it's jammed. The Doctor wants to actually sacrifice himself, he's like, there's no use for both of us to die here, Rogan, just go in, it'll be fine. And, uh, Rogan's like, well, I guess you don't know one thing about spaceship, uh, maintenance men, and he just punches the Doctor and knocks him out. <laughs> yeah, Venusi and Aikido is the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... It takes off, and Vira's like, they they would have both been killed in the blast. And uh, Sarah Jane, for the second time, this serial uh, weeps about the Doctor. And like a millionth doctor, time so far. <laughs> weeps about the Doctor being dead until the Doctor walks in, and Vira's like, Doctor? And he's like, yeah, Rogan kind of sacrificed himself. Um, but then the, uh, the radio cackles to life, and we hear Noah going, Goodbye, Vira. And then the shuttle blows up. So he... Retain his humanity even to the end. Uh, yeah, that's Which explains scene. how he led all, or why he led all of the word <laughs> into the shuttle. The word. Um, that scene was added, I guess, in the final draft of the script because I can't remember who it was, but I think it was the director, possibly Hinchcliffe, wanted a more definitive ending to the word in the serial. It was originally just going to end with the shuttle taking off and then you wouldn't hear anything more about the word. But they wanted a definitive end hmm, that's interesting. to the word. So they, they had the shuttle blow up at the end. Well, that sort of, you know, paints a better picture for the ending of this serial, but I don't think that's the right term, actually, but, I mean, it's more, the, it makes the ser- the serial itself more conclusive, but, you know, I can't really bring the worm back now. There's probably more worm elsewhere in the galaxy. Yeah, but they Plus can't bring these pre- worm back. <laughs> yeah, these ones. <laughs> they can't bring Noah back. Not that Would you I'm, want them to? No, but like... The most incompetent commander ever? Hey, I don't know. If I created a villain for this show, I'd want to leave it open for them to come back. I mean, like, it, they seem to, like, kill off the monster every serial, and they always show back up and be like, yeah, yeah well, I came back. Yeah, well, he's just a complete troll, so... <laughs> uh, the do- Since they don't have the shuttle anymore, the virus is like, oh, we're going to have to use the TMAT system to get everyone down to Earth. And the doc's like, well, it seems your thing's a little bit decalibrated, so I'll just beam down and I'll fix it up for you. Uh, Sarah, can you get my coat? And then Sarah and Harry... Get- Quick change. Get into the other uh, areas. And Sarah decides to wear bright yellow. Yeah, she's adopting Joe's uh, <laughs> outfit sensibilities. Uh- <laughs> uh- so they TMAT down to Earth... The end. Yeah, the doctor's like, I, didn't, I don't remember inviting you guys, but they're like, yeah, and yet here we are. <laughs> and, to, and then, to Sarah and Harry. And then Harry's like, well, the brig told me to stay with you, and orders are orders, so... So they beam down and serial ends. Presumably next week it'll pick up from there, and they don't just jump to a completely different <laughs> just, location. Just jumps to them team adding back and saying, like, that was a great trip to Earth. No, no. Well, I mean, if they did that, you you would know there'd have to be a novel somewhere filling in that gap. Yeah, there is a novel. Like I said before, this starts an overarching plot line between now and the end of the season, and there is a novel as part of it, I believe, or an audio, I forget. There's what. an audio that revisits Nova Beacon. The very first Fourth Doctor audio drama actually revisits Nova. It's called Destination Nova. So <laughs> didn't really keep that reveal a secret <laughs> at all. But um, I, don't know, I don't know if they were trying to, but... You know, I guess they revisited it in the first audio drama because it was kind of a famous thing because of this overarching plotline. Yeah, well, I mean, it takes up one of the fourth Doctor's, what, seven seasons, so... Yeah. Well, almost one. You know, it wasn't... Because it wasn't in last, Robot. Yeah. But, I mean, that makes sense because Robot was the post-regeneration story. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So that's the uh, end of that really serial. Really great music in this serial, I'm not going to lie. Um... That was the one thing. Yeah, I didn't I f- notice it at all. Actually. You didn't notice the music in the no, serial? No, not at all. This was the best score for any serial yet, in my opinion. The the scene at the end that felt semi foreboding, but also like happy at the same time. I guess sort of like indicating that oh, there's this is there's still f- trouble foot because they have to team that down to earth. Didn't notice it at all. And when the doctor was first uh, examining the dead worm. Didn't notice that? Nope. Wow. Not Just go all. watch those two scenes again. Those were the best, but but um there was more. 
there was more, and it was great throughout. This was my favorite uh, soundtrack. Well, it's still, Dudley, so it's still Dudley Simpson yeah. doing the music. And I, I, I was like, who did this? I, when I was watching the credits, I was like, who the heck composed this? And I was like, oh, Dudley Simpson. Wow, why did he get so much better all of a sudden? <clears throat> but I'm guessing it doesn't stay like this. Next week, it's probably just going to go back to whatever it was before. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I didn't even notice it this week, so I, <laughs> I wouldn't be the one to ask about that, actually. <laughs> like, I'd be like the least qualified person to ask about that. Uh, that was Yeah, that was the one aspect of the serial that I felt lived up to the hype. Again, I don't want... Um, not again, because I didn't say this before. I didn't really want... Uh, my expectations of this to cloud my judgment, but I guess it did. I wouldn't have. I would have enjoyed this serial yeah. a lot more had I not known anything <clears throat> about it before, or had I not read that it was one of the most beloved serials. Yeah, and that's just a problem we're gonna face for the for the whole run of the show. Really, I mean, we'll hear that like six Doctor serials are terrible, and then we'll get them. They'll be just okay because we'll expect them to be really bad, and they won't be that yeah. bad type thing. Yeah, I <clears throat> guess. You know, it so it works both ways, I guess. And uh, obviously, when you get to the reboot, there'll be a lot of that uh, for you, at least. I've watched all of the reboot now, so it won't be that much for me. Um, <laughs> and then when we catch up years down the line. When we catch up, we'll be <laughs> going in completely blind uh, f- for the first time in the whole show. Um, the only note that I think is worth mentioning, besides the like four times the Sonic Screwdriver was used in this serial... Um, was it? I think this is the first time the light on top of the TARDIS has lit up when it was materializing. I, I didn't, didn't notice, notice that because it was zoomed in on the light at the very like this very first scene of the serial. Yeah, as I the have TARDIS no idea. Was I materializing. I didn't notice. Um, I think it was the first time. Maybe it's not. Maybe it was uh, sometime during the second Doctor's run where it happened. I feel. Oh well. Um, yeah, I, I thought the serial was pretty good. So it's better than robot. Yeah, that's not too hard though. <laughs> um, well, hopefully this overarching plotline doesn't disappoint. And Vira is a pretty interesting character, so hopefully she sticks around for most of it. Uh, the Doctor does his jelly baby thing again this serial. Uh, so that's your jelly baby watch. He <laughs> kind of chucks a bag of jelly babies to Vira, and then in a different scene earlier. Uh, it was right at the end. Yeah. No, there's another scene earlier where uh, the doctor offers Harry a jelly oh, baby and then they yeah. talk about putting the eggs inside of things and Harry's like, I don't... The doctor's like, it would be like busting open like a... Like, and Harry's like, like a jelly baby. <laughs> and the doctor's like, yeah, exactly. Um, should we keep a jelly baby count? <laughs> that might get a little excessive, but... What are we at? Three? Are we counting the second doctors and the three doctors? Mm, that's a good question. I guess you I should. It is the doctor. All right. Why not? So what are we? What are we at? Four. Yes. Okay. One last cereal. Jelly baby count is at four. <laughs> this is a thing now. We should buy a bag of jelly babies and eat a jelly baby every time he offers someone a jelly baby. <laughs> like we're gonna remember. <laughs> we won't. Uh, we also won't buy a bag of jelly babies because I bet you'd have to import them from from England. Probably. We're Googling this right now. We're Googling We're probably it. probably going to get Doctor Who Amazon.com. <laughs> you can buy them on Amazon. <laughs> oh, they're covered by Prime. <laughs> oh, they're in stock. We could just buy a... Uh, what's, what's like the American equivalent of this? Like Sour Patch or whatever? It's like I don't know. <laughs> Never had Jelly Babies before. Oh, well. 400 related product Doctor Who Sonic Screwdriver <laughs> frequently b- bought together jelly babies and screwdrivers <laughs> somebody working on their fourth Doctor cosplay there probably um yeah so I think that's everything I have to say on this serial and yeah, about we, jelly babies we have to look up jelly babies to uh <laughs> to uh continue this episode but yes um before we talk about emailing, I should uh, mention that last week I made an error. I, I mentioned a serial named Face of Evil, which doesn't <laughs> exist. Uh, I actually meant uh, Enemy of the World. So, there right. you go. Also, one more thing that we didn't mention about this serial. Episode 2 was the most viewed Doctor Who episode ever at the time of its airing, for some reason. And it retained that. 
uh, straight up until the 10th Doctor's second Christmas special. Which is crazy, because, you know, viewership is probably a lot... Second Christmas special? Higher Third. than... It. Second. Third. I'm not sure. And yeah, that's, that's crazy, because, you know, viewership is probably a lot higher now than it was It held before. it until Voyage of the Damned. That's for all the people who know the name, so I don't have to flub around <laughs> like second, third, because I don't really remember. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, so email us at the Dr. Vegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters. Are you upset with our assessment of the Ark in space? I mean, I don't see why you would. We both said it was a good serial, just wasn't. Didn't live up to the hype. Sort of like Frozen. Frozen didn't live up to the hype at all, just say. <laughs> um, you can find us on iTunes Trust Your Doctor Leave a rating if you liked the show It would mean a lot to us And you can find us Our website is decadentvegetable.com Keep an eye out for Jelly Baby Watch <laughs> And uh, find us on YouTube at Trust Your Doctor Check us out on Facebook Trust Your Doctor Like us on Facebook Check us out also on Twitter uh, TYD Podcast And follow us on Twitter And next week we continue this story arc With Centauran Experiment but until then, the end. Uh...